He is the one we put our head on the ground for. How can we want blessing in our wealth when the owner of blessing is disregarded five times a day? We don't even read Salah. Can I get happiness whilst I am going against the owner of happiness? Another narration says, Man taraka salata muta'ammidan faqad kafar. A'udhu billah. Allahu Akbar. May Allah safeguard us. Whoever leaves and forsakes salah purposely, intentionally, intentionally, they cannot call themselves those within the fold of Islam. Today when you see a camera, and I saw so many in Doha, every traffic light there is a camera. I want to say a point, you can take it how you want. I'm a foreigner here, but I learned something. Do you know how people fear the camera? No matter what, they will break so hard that the man behind them might hit them. They don't mind, but that 6,000, I must not get the fine. Am I right? It's true because we are worried. We have a fine. We are, we are going to be penalized. Something's going to go from our pocket if we cross and there is a camera flash. I want to say something you can take home. If we fear Allah, half of what we fear a camera, we would solve our problem. If you are a big manager at your company, someone wants leave and they need to go through you in order to get the leave. And then you find that they have, or whilst they were walking, you looked at them and they told you, look, please, can you do this for me and that for me? And you did not do it. And you didn't do it at all. In fact, you went against them. The day you came for leave, what, what is the chance of you getting your leave? When you know that you haven't gone, you haven't done anything to even prove that you are a dedicated worker and now you want leave. He will tell you, look, you don't really deserve the leave now. You need to go and work a bit harder and then come back whenever you have proven yourself. What happens with us? We want goodness. We want happiness. We want contentment. We want sustenance. We want our children to be good. We want our lives to be in order. We want goodness in our marriages and goodness in all aspects of our life. But are we prepared to fulfill the instruction of the owner of all that? I think today it would be important for us to speak on the mobile phone for one minute to say, how can we allow ourselves to come in the house of Allah? We've made the effort, we made wudu, we managed to drive all the way here or to walk all the way here. We braved the heat or the weather conditions. As we walk in, it is nice and cool. And then we are sitting with our mobile phones and busy plugging in with everyone else on the globe. And whilst everyone is in salah, the Imam is about to say, And you hear this man's phone ring and the other man's phone ring and one of the sister's phones rings. And if the phone ring, it's one thing, but the tone itself is a disaster. It is really desecration of the masjid because those who are immoral, those who have engaged in the worst immorality in the world and they have sung songs that are full of nudity, the same song we bring it as a ringtone into the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without shame. If that's the case, where is our salah? Where is our salah? So people will come for salah, but as a routine, only routine, not with the heart plugged in to say when I say Allahu Akbar, I am actually saying Allah is the greatest. Amazing. Allah is the greatest. Who is Allah? My maker is the greatest. The one whom I depend upon is the greatest. The one who owns every aspect of my entire existence is the greatest. Can there be a more beautiful way than commencing your plug-in with your maker than that? Sometimes you find people, they read Salah as though they are competing with the chickens. The chickens pecking the grain from the floor. A man is down before you can say Subhana, he's already up. And the next thing he's gone. And the Imam says, Sami Allah liman hamida. And he's still standing. And some people are halfway down already, halfway down. They want to go, get done with. How can we do this? We are insulting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are insulting ourselves. Allah says, I don't need this. There are other people who will be praying salah better than me and you. Let's compete with one another when it comes to salah, which means we need to think to ourselves, 
let me read the best prayer possible as what was taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I will take my time and I will try to concentrate when we have too much on our heads we lose concentration so when we come to the masjid try not to have much on your head lay whatever you have to to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come to the house of Allah and wallahi you will achieve success you see the ultimate success is the success in the life after death how many people have been so wealthy but they've still died how many have been much more powerful than us they've still died so one of the biggest means of success is to surrender to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of the means of surrendering or one of the points that we should be surrendering regarding is the salah salah five times a day remember never compromise it a muslim does not read salah Al a muslim does not miss salah Al -ahdu baynana wa baynahumus salah. a narration says the differing point the defining point between us and those what who is it it is salah it's important for us to give greater importance to salah and when we come for salah we should be dressed appropriately with good clothing as the quran says ya bani adam khudhu zinatakum inda kulli masjid o children of adam ensure that you have adorned yourself correctly take your adornment when you get to the places of worship where you are going to put your head down for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what this means is sometimes people might come to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dressed in their night clothing which they only wear when they wake up from their sleep the salah might be done your private area or part is covered so I cannot tell you your salah is not valid it is valid because you have covered but you want to plug in greater to achieve more of the spiritual benefit you need to take pride. I'm going to plug in with Allah. If I had a meeting with someone in the dunya, I would probably wear some good clothing at least and smell good and at least give importance to the meeting. I want to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At least I need to wear clothing that is decent. So if we look forward to salah, we will be able to achieve a greater benefit than to just fulfill salah. And this is why I want to end by saying, there is a very big difference between reading Salah because you have to read it and reading Salah because you want to read it. There is a difference between the two. Many people read it because they have to read it. But let us be from amongst those who read it because we want to read it. Allahu Akbar. I want to do it. Not I have to. I have to is a stage. But move above that. We would like to read Salah because we want to. That is when we will be able to plug in with Allah. I see there are some children here as well. Wallahi, your success and mine lies in fulfilling salah. Don't be lazy.